Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. Today we will be discussing about hematopoiesis. So what is hematopoiesis? Hematopoiesis means production of blood cells. So what are blood cells? Red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. So how hematopoiesis occurs? First step, the uncommitted pluripotent stem cell is converted into committed pluripotent stem cell. Then it is further divided into two types lymphoid stem cell then colony forming blastocyte in colony forming blastocyte it is further divided into three types colony forming unit E colony forming unit GM and colony forming unit EM EM GM and E this unit E give rise to RBC or erythrocytes. Then colony forming unit GM. It is further divided into two types. Granulocytes and monocytes. Then colony forming unit M. It is further divided into Maha karyocytes. It gives size to platelets. Then in granulocytes, it is further divided into eosinophil, basophil, and neutrophils. So lymphoid stem cell give rise to lymphocyte. So uncommitted pluripotent stem cell is converted into committed pluripotent stem cells. Then it is further divided into lymphoid stem cell, colony forming blastocyte. So colony forming blastocytes is further divided into unit E, unit GM and unit M. This unit E gives rise to red blood cells or erythrocytes. This GM is further divided into granulocytes and monocytes. Granulocytes we have already discussed in the video of white blood cells. It gives rise to neutrophils, eosinophils and vasophils. In colony forming unit EM, mahokaryocytes gives rise to platelets. Then, let's discuss about the site of erythropoiesis. So, when the baby is in embryo, at third week, the erythropoiesis starts at the yolk sac. Where it starts? It starts at the yolk sac. And it also starts in the mesoderm of iota and gonads. It is at the third week. Then at third month of embryo the stem cells uncommitted 
the committed to repotent stem cells start migrating to the liver. So at the end of the third month, the liver acts as the major part of the hematopoiesis. Then in third month, some of the hematopoiesis also occur in the spleen. Then, at, after birth, at fourth month, from fourth month, the stem cells start migrating to the vertebra and sacrum. So at the end of the ninth month or after birth the major site of hematopoiesis is bone marrow. Then at birth to puberty. All bone marrow or red bone marrow. After puberty the red bone marrow some of the bones the red bone marrow is com converted into yellow bone marrow. It occurs due to the deposition of adipose tissue or adipose cells. So after puberty where anthropoiesis occurs. So it occurs in the proximal end of long bones that is humerus and femur then it occurs in axial skeleton like ribs vertebrae and sacrum. It also occurs in the skull bones. So up to puberty all bone marrow present or red bone marrow and they are capable of hematopoiesis. So after puberty the red bone marrow is converted into yellow bone marrow due to the deposition of adipose cells. So after puberty, the maximum site of hematopoiesis will be proximal end of the long bones, that is humerus and femur. It, then it also occurs in the axial skeleton. Uh, in peripheral skeleton, hematopoiesis is absent after puberty. So it occurs in the axial skeleton. Example, ribs, vertebrae, sacrum. Then it also, some of the hematopoiesis also occurs in the skull bones. So that's all about the hematopoiesis. Next we will be discussing about spleen. So what is spleen? It is the largest lymphoid organ and it is the secondary lymphoid organ. What is secondary lymphoid organ? What is the difference between secondary and primary lymphoid organ? In primary lymphoid organs, the cells are produced, develop and matures on the same side. It is the example of primary lymphoid organ. In secondary lymphoid organ, 
the cells of only educator that is how to fight against the immunity that is the secondary lymphoid organs then spleen where it is situated it is situated somewhere between 9th and 11th rib it is somewhat wedged to shoe shape then it consists of this is splenic artery and it consists of splenic vein it consists of outer serous layer and inner fibrous capsule these fibers capsule and they form trabeculae then in these arteries it consists of central artery in central artery it is surrounded by group of lymphocytes or sheath of lymphocytes these corpuscles are called as splenic corpuscles or malpighian corpuscles so it is present in the white pulp it consists of two types of pulps that is white pulp and red pulp in white pulp act as the major lymphocyte lymphoid site so it consists of the malpighian corpuscles and splenic corpuscles it also consists of the central artery then red red pulp red pulp consists of macrophages blood vessels etc so let's discuss about the functions of the spleen we have discussed in hematopoiesis that spleen helps in the production of blood cells in embryo then it act as the breakdown center of rbc so it is also known as the graveyard of red blood cells so why it is called as graveyard of red blood cells after 120 days so uh, life span of red blood cells is 120 days after 120 days the cell membrane of red blood cells becomes fragile so when it enters the capillaries of spleen the capillary capillaries of spleen is less the size of red blood cells or 
equal to the size of red blood cells. So when the red blood cells try to squeeze through the splenic capillaries, it cannot withstand the temperature. So it causes the breakdown of red blood cells. So this is how red blood cells are breakdown inside the splenic capillaries. Then, then it acts as the blood reservoir. It doesn't play a major role in humans but it plays a major role in animals. Then it helps in the process of immunity. Because the central artery consists of a sheath of lymphocytes. It consists of 25% of lymphocytes or T cells of our body. So it helps in the process of immunity. Next we will discuss about spleno. Megaly or hyper splenus. So what do you mean by splenomegaly? It is increase in size of spleen. So why it occurs? It occurs due to the maybe due to the cyst of the spleen then it also occurs in Hodgkin's disease or Hodgkin's lipoma it is cancer of the lymphoid tissues then it occurs in case of pernicious anemia. It also occurs in case of spirocytosis. Then what happens if splenomegaly occurs? It causes major destruction of red blood cells leading to anemia. It also causes leuco cytopenia and thrombocytopenia then hyposplenism or asplenia asplenia means absence of spleen then hyposplenism means decrease in function of the so how hyposplenia or asplenia occurs it may be due to the congenital cause congenital absence of the spleen then it may be acquired Due to some accidental or emergency cases, spleen is removed. Surgical removal of the spleen. Then in case of autoimmune disease like diseases, spiro cytosis also cause the destruction of own body spleen. So that's all about the spleen. So in today we have discussed about the hematopoiesis and spleen. Thank you so much for watching the video.